Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. A happy Thursday to all of you and a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Suzanne B, Jeff M, and Burt B. Thank you guys very much. Let's start off the second to last day of 2021 with some comedy. So city analyst Itay McKaylee has a sell rating on Tesla, but he has bumped his price target from 236 per share up to $262 per share. I won't waste your time going through the reasoning, but let's just come back in a year or so and see how close Ite really was. It actually gets better. So GM keeps its buy rating from Ite with the price target moving to $96 from 90. And he said, GM remains our top pick with a long-term upside case of $200 per share. Though the shares have underperformed since the recent departure of the crew's CEO, we still view GM's upcoming CES EV unveilings as a likely positive catalyst for the stock. And you know what? I actually just thought of this, but I'm going to start a prediction tracker. So when people say what they think is going to happen, and then every six months or every year or so, we can look back and gauge the progress and how accurate those predictions were. So stay tuned for that one. Here we have Will Mead, who is a former hedge fund portfolio manager, well-respected in the industry, saying, remember that end of year window dressing will go on today and Friday, which means every portfolio manager will be buying Tesla. Tesla retested its break out today, which is always a great buy signal, Tesla likely has another leg up to $14 to $1,500. So window dressing is just when a fund at the end of the year buys more of the best performing stocks throughout the year relative to the underlying indices. So for example, if fund A owns maybe 4% of Tesla, but Tesla was the best performing stock throughout the year, at the end of the year, right before it closes and they do all of their paperwork to give to investors, maybe they boost that to 6%, 7%, 9%, whatever the number may be to say, hey, look, one of our largest holdings, Tesla, which is now, you know, nine or 10% did this well over the year. And because Tesla outperformed in 2021, he's saying that many portfolio managers will be window dressing by buying Tesla shares over the last two days of the year. Just a quick anecdote here, but this image was spotted of some black Model Ys leaving Giga Berlin. No one really knows what they're for, crash testing, validation, what have you. However, just a reminder, Giga Berlin is not sitting still as it awaits final approval. They are still gearing up, tooling up, and getting ready once they get the green light so they can hit the ground running with initial production. Here we have the most circulated news item of the day. Tesla recalls almost half a million cars over some safety issues. So what's going on here? Looks like Tesla will recall more than 475,000 Model 3 and Model S cars to address a rear view camera and front trunk issues. The recall will affect cars from 2014 to 2021 more momentarily, but recalling 300 156,000 2017 to 2020 Model 3s to address rear view camera issues and then 119,000 Model S vehicles due to front hood problems. For the Model 3, the rear view camera cable harness may be damaged by the opening and closing of the trunk lid, preventing the rear view camera image from displaying. Tesla has identified 2,301 warranty claims and 601 field reports regarding the issue for US vehicles. And for Model S vehicles, the front hood latch problems may lead to a trunk to open without warning and obstruct the driver's visibility, increasing the risk of a crash. Tesla said it was not aware of any crashes, injuries, or deaths related to these issues. A few other important points. One, these are indeed voluntary recalls. Two, Tesla is estimating that only 1% of Model 3 vehicles will actually display the defect compared to 14% of the recalled Model S vehicles. And since the Model S problem is a misalignment rather than a damaged component, Tesla believes that repositioning the latch device at a service center will resolve the issue. Tesla has also pledged to install a new cable harness and guide protector free of charge. And in the actual documentation, you can see that the planned owner notification date isn't until February 18th, 2022. So what that means is that the VIN search database, which I will link below if you wanna search your specific VIN, by the way, I believe that is case sensitive. So you can actually just copy the VIN from the Tesla app as far as I understand, but that might not be updated for your specific vehicle until closer to that February 18th date. Some people are searching and their car is showing up. 
Others are searching and it's not, so it's mixed reviews so far, but just keep that in mind. Raphael on Twitter said he had this problem with his rear cam last year on his 2019 Model 3. Tesla service came to his house and fixed it in 30 minutes. Here's the VIN recall search linked below if you're curious about your vehicle. And as you can see, the database has been updated for some of the Model 3 NSs in question here, but not for all. And once again, Trip Chowdhury speaking up as a Tesla bull as of late saying that today's recall news is a non-event and investors should buy the weaknesses. Moving to Giga Berlin, it looks like Tesla has submitted some missing documentation and at the end of the 50th calendar week, the outstanding documents and information were received, which formed the basis for a decision on the Tesla application. These documents will now be checked by the State Office for the Environment and the Lower Water Authority of the Odersprey District, among others. A date for the decision can therefore not be given. Brandenburg's Prime Minister said, I'm optimistic, but we mustn't trip over the last few meters. It's now important that we continue to do everything we can with the necessary patience to let the approval process continue to run professionally. So to me, it's still sounding like a few weeks until final approval. Here we have an update on the Tesla and Hertz deal. So reportedly, the initial deliveries of the Tesla Model 3 have already started to arrive as part of the first wave of our national rollout that will continue to expand to new markets next year. This coming from a Hertz spokesperson, but unfortunately, they did not give any specifics as to number of vehicles so far. Found this from Cyber Mike on Twitter, definitely one of my favorite how it started, how it's going stories, going from GMC or <laughs> Government Motors to a Tesla Center. Ryan on Twitter shared interesting note on Model X deliveries. It was originally reported that Tesla would begin with a six seat configuration before moving to other arrangements. He can now confirm this is no longer the case as all seating arrangements five, six, and seven have been delivered for both plaid and long range Model X versions. Dirty Tesla shared that V11 will show your car with little music notes to alert you and remind you that your external speakers are indeed playing music or sounds. Now, there's been some confusion on this the last few days. Some people are saying that New York is now only buying Ford Mach-E's for its police fleet. However, Drive Tesla Canada has seemingly approved or confirmed with the citywide administrative services that the city has also approved the $12.3 million purchase for 250 Model 3s. So this will be in addition to the new reporting that they're also adding Ford Mach-E's to its fleet. So the latest development was in this press release. The citywide administrative services have placed an order for 184 all-electric Mustang Mach-E crossover vehicles for law enforcement and emergency response use. These vehicles will be slated for use by the police department, the sheriff's office, department of correction, parks and rec, environmental protection, so on and so forth. They will replace gas powered vehicles currently in the city fleet. And these vehicles are expected to be received by the city by June 30th, 2022. These will be the Mach-E GT models, which will have 270 miles of range. So just wanted to add some clarity that with that over $400 million investment coming from New York to electrify its municipal fleet, it will be both with some Model 3s and some Mach-E's, not one or the other, but more details to come. So about a year ago today, Dave Lee tweeted he proposed Elon form a holding company called X, basically as an overall umbrella for all of Elon's endeavors. The mission of X would be to ensure human survival and progress. X would become the parent company of Tesla Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring. Elon at the time said he thought it was a good idea. And just today, actually, Elon commented again with this pondering emoji. So why X? Well, it's been reported that Elon has the domain x.com, which is one reason, and it would be kind of a cool title. To be clear, this is a controversial decision as people like Gary Black think it's a terrible idea as investors might want pure plays with a singular focus and manufacturing and distribution synergy. Fair enough. Now, the easiest way to think about this would be like Alphabet. I'm sure you've heard of the company, almost a $2 trillion company, but let's go back and remember why they did that. Well, the shakeup was intended to help all of its businesses operate more efficiently, a move former CEO Larry Page was working on for years. This move also allowed Page to step back from day-to-day -day operations to focus on the bigger picture. None of us like to think about this day. However, it is going to come when Elon is no longer the boots on the ground and needs to transition into a different role for all of these companies. Part of the 
problem here or the pushback is that these holding companies or conglomerates can be very confusing and convoluted. From an investor standpoint, sometimes it can be hard to know what you're actually investing in. The reporting gets very confusing. To give some clarity though, the ticker GOOGL represents Alphabet's class A shares and is traded as common stock with a one share, one vote structure. GOOG represents Alphabet's class C shares, which have no voting rights. And the company also has Class B shares, which are held by the founder and other insiders, which have 10 votes per share, but these Class B shares are not publicly traded. And look, we already know that Tesla is a conglomerate of sorts, being an umbrella with many different startups under that main Tesla name. And as Dave Lee is arguing, well, Elon Musk would be the synergy between these companies. And honestly, my personal opinion would be heavily dependent on how they choose to incorporate SpaceX into something like this. Is it gonna IPO on its own? Would it only be through investment? thing in X. Like I said, there's just so many details where you can't say if it's a good or bad thing until all of those details are laid out because you can structure it in many different ways. However, I do think it has the potential to be awesome because for somebody to just invest in company X and get access to all of Elon's endeavors in a simple, easy, hopefully clear way would be a great thing. But there are, as I mentioned, many issues with that strategy, possibly depending on how it's structured. Looking at Alphabet's class A stock over the last five years up 270%. Okay, well, let's try to contextualize that quickly. The S&P over the last five years up 114%. So more than doubling up on the S&P outperforming seems to have performed pretty well over the last five years. But one simple paragraph to illustrate some of the potential drawbacks of doing something like this. Talking about Alphabet, the restructuring could allow Google to focus on its core search and advertising business and report results to the parent company that reflect its own results, not those of other companies beneath it. It also helps Alphabet keep potential risks in one LLC from spreading to others. Something to think about. While not all the legal and regulatory motivations for making today's change are clear, it's likely that the quarterly and yearly financial reports to the SEC will still bear the Alphabet name. Now, in my opinion, one of the main drawbacks of something like this could be less transparency because you think about reporting, getting a company report for company X, it would have an absurd amount of information. You're not going to have as much detail. Whereas if Tesla and SpaceX and Neuralink and Boring were public trading separately versus all in one, you're not gonna get as much detail with them all in one umbrella. Looking at precedents with Alphabet, it's already not required to report in fine detail the performance of affiliates like Google, Nest, Verily, and others to the SEC because they aren't public companies. They're owned by Alphabet. There's a chance that today's change could result in Alphabet reporting even less about its affiliates. So what if Elon didn't want SpaceX to go public or boring or Neuralink? These are all things that would have to be fleshed out before we're actually able to make an informed decision on if this is something we would want to see happen or not. And look, I know I've lingered here for a little bit, but I see so many people already online saying, you know, this would be the greatest thing ever. And just as many saying this is the worst thing ever. I just don't understand what these people are talking about because they don't even know what they're talking about. There's actually zero information given on how this company X would be structured. So to say it's good or bad, it just doesn't make any sense. And it makes you look like you don't know what you're talking about. And sure, if you wanna talk hypotheticals and theoreticals, that's fine. There's an absolute place for that. It's very fun to explore this idea. I just wanted to offer a stern reminder. There is plenty of information that would need to be determined before we can talk in specifics. That is all for today please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.